o kipa mai. Come and be friendly. I've dreamed of Hawaii for so long. I wonder if dreams come true. Here's the stuff that dreams are made of. Waikiki, with its famous beach, its fine hotels. We're coming over Honolulu now. We'll reach the airport in a moment. Ho'o kipa mai. Come and be friendly. Mark Twain called Hawaii the loveliest fleet of islands anchored in any sea. Many others have found it so. They come again and again, by sea and air, enchanted by the land, the climate, and the people. Ah, the young career girl who wonders if dreams come true. Looks like a nice start. Flower lays and hulas, where else but in Hawaii? Friendly, happy people are happy to be friendly with you. So, where now? A hotel, naturally. The Moana at Waikiki. There are many fine hotels at Waikiki. She chooses the Moana because of its romantic past. A long-time favorite, it has kept up with the times and compares favorably with the most modern of resort hotels. That's just what Dorothy is seeking. The romantic traditions of the past, but modernized and gay. Pineapple, with the compliments of the house. An old Matson custom, borrowed from the Polynesians naturally the fruit of the land to make the visitor welcome. You don't expect it, but it's sort of nice. Like the Moana itself, a romantic tradition of the past, but rather modern and rather gay. Pineapple's nice, but hardly the main attraction at Waikiki. That's the idea. On the beach at Waikiki. And so is this young tourist. His destination? The surf rider, which, like the Moana, has the sea and the sand and other attractions right at its lanai. My, my. But that's the hostess with the official greeting. Hmm, I think I'm gonna like this place. Let's take a look at the view. While he's looking at the beach, suppose we look to sea. Still more visitors are coming in. Some arrive by plane, some prefer a ship. The luxury and leisure of the Lurleen make the trip itself as pleasant as the islands. However they choose to come, we bid them welcome. things will be the same. I'm sure they will. That sounds like a second honeymoon to me, reliving the memories of the first. They will stay at the same hotel, of course. The Royal Hawaiian, a trip. They are welcomed the day when the Lurleen arrives. Each guest is greeted personally. Like flower lays and music, that's part of the tradition of Hawaiian hospitality. In the old days, everyone in a village wanted the visitor to be happy. Nowadays, the same friendly warmth of feeling is shared by every member of the hotel staff. Second honeymooners, like Mr. and Mrs. Craig, usually want the same room they had before. So it's been booked for them. Come on, let's see if the view's the same. I'll bet it is. I'll bet they wouldn't change it for the world. So many people having fun. Enjoying the sun, the sand, the sapphire sea. Lazy days at Waikiki. Relax and take it easy. 
real easy if you want to. Chatting a while of nothing in particular. Watching the passing parade. Have you wondered what happened to our dream girl, Dorothy? Dreams are going nicely. After a swim, she learns the movements of a hula. Every hula tells a story, you know, and it's always told by the hand. A couple of Royal Hawaiian Beach Boys teach the same dance to another visitor. While the hands tell the story, the hips beat the time. But what happened to that other boy, the big boy, Jack? Well, this surfboard routine is made to order. You let the Beach Boy carry her board, see? Then you get one and show her how it's done. <laughs> the oldest technique in the world. Boy will show girl how good he is. Here he comes. There he goes. Mr. and Mrs. Craig know the water sports will wait, so they shop around a bit. As old timers, they will buy their gifts and sports clothes in the islands. Here's something new. Who ever heard of a hotel with a class in flower arrangement? Not Mrs. Craig, but she seems to like it. Here's something everybody likes, the pool at the Princess Kaiulani. Even the ancient Polynesians, you know, enjoyed their freshwater pools as much as they did the ocean. Looks like the same old story, too. Girl dunks boy, boy chases girl, girl leads boy a merry chase. Better hurry, Dottie, he might catch you. Or is that the general idea? Anyway, the big freshwater pool, in addition to ocean bathing, is a great favorite at the Princess Kaiulani, youngest member of the Matson family. Named for a young girl for whom Robert Louis Stevenson composed poems, written in April to Kaiulani in the April of her age. The lobby of the hotel contains a portrait of the young princess, flanked by feathered kahilis, the symbol of Hawaiian royalty. The hotel, named in her honor and dedicated by descendants of Hawaiian nobility, has won a unique place in the esteem of the island people. Befitting this position, the Princess Kaiulani features a permanent collection of modern Pacific art. As one example, the murals of the Kahili Room, made of inlaid native woods and mother of pearl, depict the evolution of the feathered Kahili and the early migrations of the Polynesian race. From the Mauna Kea Terrace, or the Robert Louis Stevenson Room, on the roof of the Princess Kaiulani, Dorothy and her friends can see still more fine hotels. Matson is proud of the company it keeps at Waikiki. The Edgewater, the Halikulani, the Breakers, and many others under different ownerships join with the Princess Kaiulani, Surfrider, Moana, and Royal Hawaiian in extending the best of Hawaiian hospitality to every visitor. Hospitality, of course, includes good food. Nowhere does one eat better or enjoy his food more than at Waikiki. Whether on the sunny Pikaki Terrace beside the Princess Kaiulani Pool, or at one of the informal luncheon buffets on the beach itself. The one on the surf terrace of the Royal Hawaiian is world famous as a gourmet's delight. Of course, if one prefers, he may be served in the privacy of his own lanai. Many, though, seem to like the informality and friendliness of the seaside buffets at the Royal Hawaiian and Surfrider, which, among other things, allow the eye to anticipate the approaching happiness. No office to return to, no housework to do, no social obligations to be fulfilled. How could life be sweeter? Lie in the sun to make you lazy, jump in the sea to wake you up. Other things to do? Sure, plenty. But there's no rush. Enjoy them in your own good time. Wander over to the Moana's Banyan Court and listen to the sweet songs and music of Hawaii Calls, a worldwide broadcast originating in the islands. Or on the broad terrace of the Royal Hawaiian, enjoy the informality of attending a fashion show in your bathing suit. Afternoon, evening, and sportswear are modeled 
and all the garments shown, as well as a similar selection for men, are carried by the shops in the Matson hotels themselves. As the afternoon wears on and the cocktail hour approaches, you may greet it at any of the hotel terraces or lounges, such as the Captain Cook Bar and the Surf Rider, and the others we have seen. Or relax in the privacy of your own room, enjoying your handiwork with a camera. Hawaii is a photographer's paradise, you know, and the Craigs, like the other visitors, make the most of it. Good pictures help keep happy memories alive. Refreshments are a happy thought as well. If you don't wish to go to them, you can easily have them come to you. The Craigs choose a pair of the Royal Hawaiian's famous planter's punches. A pleasant day. And now, with the cocktail hour taken care of, it's almost time for evening. I think a dinner jacket makes a man look distinguished. I think that evening gown makes you look delicious. Formal clothes are flattering and proper for the evening. That is, if you wish to wear them. On boat day, whenever the Lurleen arrives, the Royal Hawaiian has a cocktail party at which the hotel's manager introduces to his guests the members of the staff who will be responsible for their comfort and enjoyment. That's an old tradition of Hawaiian hospitality that we still like. That was pleasant. And now, with the cocktail party over, it's time to think of dinner. Our favorite couple have learned to appreciate food in the Matson Manor. Experienced travelers, they have found it wise to take all or most of their meals at the hotel. The Royal Hawaiian, operating under the American plan, makes this method doubly attractive, for the meals are included with the room. In this way, it's possible, and all meals, to afford an excellence of food and service that might otherwise be reserved as a special treat. It's nice, too, to order any item on the menu without considering the price. Fine foods, vintage wines, an elegant and courtly service. Mr. Craig, conservative in taste, selects a popular favorite, broiled New York cut garni. For Mrs. Craig, there is an exotic island creation, chicken royal Hawaiian. Whatever one's taste, whether conservative or adventurous, the quality and preparation of the food delight the palates of the most exacting. A good meal deserves a leisurely enjoyment. To add to that contentment, songs and dances of the islands help the time pass pleasantly. In Hawaii, you can feel the tensions and worries slip away. There's no room here for anything but a feeling of well-being. Pleasant evening follows pleasant day. One day, two days, three days. The days and nights slide by as easily as the soft breeze in the ponds. And we know that we'll greet tomorrow as we greet the people. Oh, keep on my Come and be friendly. When morning comes, you may choose to sleep a while. But we start early, getting things ready for the new day and new pleasures that lie ahead. As each new day arrives, the visitor feels more at home. And it's not long before the newcomer, the Malahini, becomes the old timer, the Kamaina, and feels a real kinship, in spirit at least, with the Hawaiians at the Bishop Museum, who faithfully preserve in a live exhibit the customs and traditions of the old days. In the old days, as in some places today, a luau, or Hawaiian feast, was prepared by wrapping the food in leaves and roasting it in an emu of heated rocks. The national dish of Hawaii, which you might try if you're adventurous, is made by pounding the taro root into a thick paste called poi. Many of the old-time ways, especially in the neighbor islands, are still part of the daily life of the Hawaiian people. On the garden island of Kauai, the kupuna, the grandfather, pounds poi for his family. As usual, visitors are welcome. You should 
by all means visit the neighbor islands. Two fine airlines make the trip comfortable and convenient. No doubt you'll want to stay a while and partake of island hospitality. There are excellent modern hotels on each of the major islands. This Hawaiian barbecue may help convince you. It's a sample of the food served at the Coco Palms Lodge, one of the several on the Garden Island of Kauai, which act as a convenient headquarters for exploring beautiful mountain and beach scenery, and the unique spectacle of Waimea Canyon, the Grand Canyon of the Pacific. On the valley island of Maui, where steep mountain gorges laced with waterfalls and pools run down to lovely secluded beaches perfect for picnicking and swimming, Hotel Hanamaui, with its own private golf course, extends the customary Hawaiian hospitality, as do other hotels as well. On the big island of Hawaii, the Kona Inn on the famous Kona Coast offers a perfect setting for rest and relaxation. Volcano House, by contrast, invites exciting explorations of two active volcanoes, Kilauea and Mauna Loa. At Parker Ranch, second largest under the American flag, as elsewhere in all the islands, trips can be arranged to such beauty spots as the lush greenery of Waipio Valley. Each of our islands is different, yet perfect in its own way. You've not seen Hawaii until you've seen them all. Returning from the neighbor islands, the fancy of the Craigs is intrigued by a catamaran, a modern craft using the same principle of design as the ancient outrigger canoes. The Polynesian outrigger canoes themselves, like the ships of the Vikings and the clipper ships of early America, are one of the most successful seagoing craft ever designed by man. In them, the Polynesian race, navigating by the stars, the clouds, the drift of seaweed and the flight of birds, crossed thousands of miles of open ocean at the dawn of history. Today, in the capable hands of descendants of those early seafarers, they offer a safe but uniquely Polynesian thrill as they charge through the surf at Waikiki. Of course, if you want to go really Polynesian and try your skill on a surfboard, the sky's the limit. Either at Waikiki or at nearby Makaha Beach, where the championship contests are held. Surf riding is an old island sport originated by Hawaiian kings, and the skill and grace of the real experts riding the big waves is an enthralling spectacle to watch. The idea is to keep sliding down the sloping front of the wave, either on a surfboard or body surfing. Both are lots of fun. But if you don't keep up with the wave, you get dunked. So if you get dunked, there's fun down there too. With an experienced guide, skin diving opens the door to a new world of mystery and enchantment. Even the fish seem friendly. So we play with them for a while, and then with a friendly turtle. Fun on the surface of the water and fun beneath it. While back at the hotels, there's fun for everyone. Today we invite you to a ho'olaulea, a gathering for fun. This is the Hawaiian version of a picnic. Singing and getting acquainted as we drive along the scenic windward shore of Oahu, we stop at frequent vantage points to enjoy and photograph the view. Getting there is fun in itself, but the real fun will start when we reach the exclusive picnic grounds of the Matson Hotels, overlooking beautiful Kaneohe Bay. Everybody's here and everybody's happy. Would you ever see a crowd of substantial leading citizens dressed like this at home? In Hawaii, something happens to almost everyone, something they like. The informality, the relaxation, the plain friendliness of the place and the people. You notice it not only in others, but you notice it in yourself. Back home, you might try to beat these people at a traffic light. 
But here there's a difference. You'd rather sing and dance with them. Or pick grapefruit, maybe, from one another's shoulders. How'd you like to be the grapefruit? Hey, break it up. But it's all in fun. And now a conga line gets started. Shall we join it? Lucky we did, because the conga line becomes the chow line. Aren't you glad we built an appetite? A fine appetite, a fine lunch, and fine company. Do you wonder people say, don't wake me up, just let me dream? Well, maybe we'll stay awake after all. This is a nice dessert for a pleasant lunch. And now, while we take it easy, we'll see and hear an authentic Samoan knife dance. Afternoon rolls on to evening. There is a last gathering for song and for toasting marshmallows over a koa wood fire. This is the traditional end for the Ho'olaulea. Ho'olaulea, come and have fun. Ho'okipa mai, come and be friendly. Every day a holiday, and every evening a new party and a new date. Tonight they're going really Polynesian. So, with Dottie dressed becomingly in a pake mu and her boyfriend in a pariu, they attend the luau, or Hawaiian feast, at Don the Beachcombers. Don places a lay of miley leaves on the shoulders of an Hawaiian elder who will bless the food roasting in the emu. As the food is uncovered, the ancient chant begins. With the food blessed and enjoyed, the entertainment starts. It's the hands, remember, that tell the story. They seem to want another story. This one's from Tahiti. Maybe she wrote the book. If any of these people ever knew of worry or boredom or tension, you certainly wouldn't know it now. In Hawaii, things, as the days and nights slip by as easily as the soft breeze in the palms. If it could only go on like this forever, you think. But unfortunately for our visitors, the time comes when they must say aloha to Hawaii. Some of those who came by ship return by plane. And some of those who came by plane returned by ship, carrying the spirit of the islands with them. Boat day is one of greeting, too. As we say aloha to, say aloha to old friends who are leaving, we also say aloha to new friends who are coming in. Aloha, you know, means both hello and goodbye. And this looks like another dream girl who wonders if dreams come true. Newlyweds, on their first honeymoon this time, building memories for later years. And another boy to show the girls how good he is. Maybe he is this time. She seems to be chasing him. Day after day, through all the seasons of the year, as some visitors depart with cherished memories, others are arriving in Hawaii. The newcomers we call malahinis, the old timers kamainas. Both come in a steady stream. What brings them to Hawaii? There are many reasons when you count them one by one, but there is one unique reason when you add them up. It's what we call the spirit of aloha. The aloha party at the Moana, like the parties at the other hotels, expresses this feeling. It's a feeling of friendliness, of being happy with one another. Polynesians have always been like that, you know. The Polynesian islands, of which the Hawaiian islands are a part, 
were called the Friendly Islands. The hula is a friendly dance, and so is our ballroom dancing, too. Friendliness and romance, dancing in the moonlight or beneath the stars on the surf terrace of the Royal Hawaiian. All year, the nights are oneness of our feeling. So too does our other greeting. Ho'o kipa mai, come and be friendly. <laughs> 